Welcome to part two of Word Chapter 4. We're picking up on page 232, working with editing and formatting lists. And sorting paragraphs is where we're going to start. We should still have open our chapter file for Word 4, the Paw Pridge State Park file. And what the book is saying and wanting us to do is noticing that this list of lodging descriptions they would like an alphabetical order. Easy. Love it. One thing you want to note is we sort in a variety of ways. Here on the home tab of your ribbon in the paragraph grouping, we have an A through Z button that's sorting. You do want to select what you want sorted, and you want to select it in entirety. So this is a good time to turn on your show hides. If you don't work with them, turn on. If you don't work with them on, uh, turn them on to make sure you select everything that's here. And make sure that there is a backwards P after each one of these items. If there is one of those little mini carriage returns, meaning it would, it's a shift enter, that will um, that line will not be on its own. Also, some people, if you ever see this kind of thing, where they use a return instead of a manual line break, this sleeps for people would get put under the S's instead of up here with the in room. So make sure that you have used your manual line breaks and your uh, end of paragraphs, your enter key appropriately. So we have selected only these bullets on our home tab paragraph group. Let's click the A to Z drop down button. And it asks you what do you want to sort by? You want to look at the headings, uh, you want to look at some fields, or you want to go with paragraphs. We're just doing paragraphs of text, so let's keep it here. Type says what do you have? Numbers, dates, or text? Definitely text. And word will change as it um, reads what you're doing and try to guess what you actually have. So usually it's right. The big question is, do you want A on top or do you want it in descending order with Z on top? Well, we want alphabetical with A sending with A on top. Next thing, my list has a header row. That would be more like in a table. Um, you can see the header row on the table. We don't have anything like that, so we can just say no header row, and we go for OK. Bam! Our nice little list is in alphabetical order. Now we can make these look a little better. I'm going to increase my zoom because I'm tired of looking at it so small. Ooh, I don't need quite that large though. There. And I'm going to turn off my show hides because what we're about to do I'd like to see a little bit better. Um, we're going to do a little formatting here. We're going to simply select be uh, from the before the colon forward. So I have cabins as a premium and then I'm going to in the styles gallery I'm going to change this to intense emphasis Whew. so they think that intense emphasis looks like that alright I'll take it basically puts it in italics doesn't even bold it seems like if you were intense you'd want it deeper but again when you're using things that other people set up you have to decide if you're going to keep them or adjust them to what better fits your needs. Um, now, I like this, so I'm going to apply it to each one of these other bullets. Well, I there's several ways to get this done. Did you know that F4 repeats the last thing you did? So if I come down a line and I select those and I press F4, it automatically applies that intense emphasis. All right, love it. There's another way to do this, and your book's going to show you the Format Painter. Format Painter, if you recall from other things you've learned, is a single-use button. When you select what you like, that's your bucket of paint, you click on Format Painter to get your paintbrush, then you get one opportunity to put that paintbrush somewhere else in your document. If you want to use it like a light switch, where you turn it on and you use it until you're done with it, that is a double click. So I'm going to, I have my cabin standard selected, I like it. I'm going to do format painter double click 
Now my paintbrush is on until I turn it off. So I can go to Campsites Electric. Oh, see, this is so hard to do it this way. I don't know about you, but I find it a pain in the rear to try to get to just the between the see we just keep on taking that nope I'm not gonna do that so when I'm done with my format painter you can click on it you can press escape whatever you want to do I am not going to do that all right I'm going to format paint this one oh fooey see I don't like fussing with this I'm gonna do intense emphasis here now my next things I'm gonna do four I'm going to do F4 because I find that easier. Why fuss with trying to get, get your computers, I mean your selection, and with your mouse exactly at the exact same point? And when you're using these drag and um, things with your touch, oh my goodness, that drives me crazy trying to get stuff. But anyways, that's soapbox for a different day. So here, um, I found it easier to use my F4 repeater key than I did to use the Format Painter. Other times, Format Painter is wonderful and I love it to pieces. If you're sharing files like on a group project, Format Painter is fantastic. Use of styles is fantastic. Ways to ensure that your formatting uh, is consistent when you put your whole document together. Next thing we're going to be looking at is this lovely little bullet. Who wants anything so mundane as a circle? We would like something really cool. Um, maybe something like a bed. That could be really cool. So select the paragraphs in the bulleted list. Let's go up under the paragraph grouping here on the home tab. A drop down arrow for the bullet list. Don't click on the bullet list because that'll take them off. And we want to define a new bullet. Easy enough. Pulls up the dialog box for it. We want a picture. Let's go get us a picture. Let's see if we can do this in the office search, the clip art. Click here and type pillow. Oops, if you can spell it correctly. If you can't, it evidently can read what you're doing anyways. Isn't that funny? Um, we like the single bed. So do whatever you need to do to find this. This would be one of those times if you can't find this item, you want to make certain that you would write me a note when you're uploading this to Blackboard uh, telling me that it's different. So we select it and insert it. And look, we're going to have cute little beds next to our list. We click OK. Click somewhere away from it. And now we can see how our bullets have turned into little beds. Notice again, reminder, that it's a small item. This is not something you're going to use a very detailed picture for. Stay simple. Um, a pillow may even have been better than a full bed. All right, now you've done it. I want to see. Change to find new bullet, picture, P I L L O this time, and maybe um, do we have anything about a simple bed pillow? No, we always have people in our beds or a wedding. What was this blue one? Did I miss one? All right, again, you want something relatively simple. Let's see what... Hmm. They really don't know how to do a picture, do they, of a pillow? Well, we're not drawing one today. So we will just insert that one and see what it looks like. See, again, you can't hardly see it. You would have to change the size of your bullet uh, in order to get it to be more uh, visible. So. Uh, Stay with something simple. Don't go messing with fancy detailed photos because you aren't going to be able to s tell what they are unless we zoom in and when we have pieces of paper in front of us, we really can't do that. All right, next thing we have going on is the, uh, if you recall, the recreation down here didn't have anything underneath it. So they want us to put in a multi-level numbered list. Who can think of how to do this? Excellent. If you thought of here in the paragraph grouping, 
we come up to multi-leveled list. We want current list format. It's going to be easiest. starts with a number 1. And we're going to type this in. This is on page 237. Let's come back one. Uh, shows here in your textbook what it's going to look like. So number 1 is canoe. Underneath canoe, we press tab, and it moves us in, indented, 3 mile, 5 hyphen, these are hyphens, make sure you get those in there, mile, and 10 hyphen mile trips. Rent a canoe, kayak, or tube, open daily from May 1 through September 30. Oh, and of course, make certain that you can uh, spell. And if you noticed, I did not uh, type a capital letter at the beginning of my bullets. As you well know, Word always capitalizes the first letter, so I have grown lazy and I love it. D, uh, we don't actually have. We are going to do, we want to get to item number two. All we have to do is shift. Hold down shift, then press tab while we're holding that down. And takes us back to our first level, and we have fish. Just similar like we did with um, the smart art graphic. And this information is on page 238. So we have, uh, we're going to have four items here when we're done. Under hike, we have a 15 trails ranging from one, oops, to five miles in length. That is not, wow, first of the semester and I always already need to learn how to type. And we also indent under letter A. We have two that are easy, then we have 10 are moderate. Remember, if you have an A, you should have a B. So if you don't have a B to go with your A, rethink this. Bicycles are not allowed on hiking trails. And four is swim. And we have a five notes under this one. Public beach. This sounds kind of fun. Olympic size, that's a hyphen, outdoor pool, indoor, oops, for overnight guests, no lifeguards on duty, and this is open May 15 through September 15, and I still can't spell, there we go. So easy enough to create your multi-level list, going with um, tab and shift tab to get it back. Now, if you're like me, I don't know about you, but I am in old school. So here's where I always get in trouble. Instead of just accepting the way that this looks, oh no, I have to come back. I was taught that the A should be under the first letter of the, of the uh, word the heading above it. So A should be under, A, B, C should be under C, under the F, under the H. So I would always be fussing around with things and then have to reset them. This just gets to be a mess. Maybe we should start to be accepting of what the format is. You can actually define some stuff. Up to you how you want to do that in your own documents. For here we're going to accept it as is. And make sure you hit save if you haven't in a while. Okay. So that's working with the tables. Here's something I no I'm sorry, with the multi-level list. Here's something I'm noticing. Are you seeing the same thing? Lodging rates per night. I now have uh, one line all by itself on the next page. Ooh, we aren't going to want to do this one. Um, page 239 is going to have some 
instructions for us on here on page 239 it, it highlights the modifications we're going to be making to the tables uh, in both of those you can work from that or you can follow along with a detailed list in the next few pages so use whichever one that you're comfortable with or use both first of all we're going to be looking at the lodging rates per night and you may or may not look exactly like mine one of the things that click in here our table tools comes up on our ribbon so that we can see and I'm gonna go under layout and say view grid lines what that does is if there's cell markers that didn't have borders on them like up here in the in the header row it gives me dotted lines for those everything else that already has a border on it it will not affect because the border will be visible over the grid lines. Grid lines, reminder, are not printing characters. They're simply there to guide you what's happening. And column width is the first thing we're going to look at. You can click and drag your column widths. Just remember that if you have a, a cell selected and then you try to click and drag, you are affecting only that cell. Not always the best thing that you want to do. So first I always make sure that I have nothing selected. My cursor is just anywhere. Then I move on to a different cell. Get my two-headed arrow. And I like to start off by simply best fitting my column. And you can do that individually or you can do it on the um, through the commands on the ribbon. If I'm only working with one column, I just simply come up and double click, and that column itself is best fit. If I want to work with the whole table, I select it on the layout tab of table tools in the cell size grouping. We have a button that says auto fit, and I say auto fit to contents. I don't like what that one did because my first column did not auto fit so I went back and auto fit just that column and it works. There's some other things to do. Um, we want to make sure this column ends up at 1.48 is what it wants. I don't like that. Do you like that? I'm not going to do it. Best fit. I like that better. Why would I want to have something on two lines when I have plenty of room to have it only on one? Right? Right. Next thing that it has us looking at is the, and by the way it does think that 1.48 would fit. I don't know why it doesn't on mine. If it fits on your screen, you can leave it there. Otherwise, go ahead and best fit like I did. And row height. For this, we want to select everything except the header row. The header row is on two, um, the column headings. Those are on two lines, so let's not affect those. Let's uh, uh, select the other rows as you're selecting remember that it also selects the end of row marks that's you want that and we're going to change that height to be 0.3 motorhome pops on that page see now I'm feeling better that all came on one page um, we'll take care of that in a little bit later other things we know is that it does not look very professional when you have numbers over at the left edge and a bunch of white space after after them so we will simply change those to and they're not on the same height notice our our words over here in the left column column a are lower in the cells and their numbers are at the top easy enough layout grouping I'm sorry layout tab of the ribbon we go to the alignment grouping towards the right Remember we have these nine boxes that show us how text can appear in a cell 
and we are going to simply align center. So that means align center means that up and down inside a cell is centered and left to right is also centered. Height and width are both centered. Anybody know another way to do that? Uh, we learned about it. I know we practiced it in 136. I used, yes, practice it in 133. We could have set a decimal tab and then all, lined all our numbers at the right and we could have moved that decimal tab to be over towards the center of the cell. That would also take care of the same situation. Now for shading, making it look a little pretty. Left hand corner, top left cell, that did not get shaded. So we want to um, on our design tab for our table tools over here towards the right of the styles we have shading. And we it is currently set to go on to um, we want brown accent three to match what's on. The other thing we could have done, anybody remember it? We could have clicked here in um, the, uh, one of the other cells. We could have done our format painter. And, all right, give me what I want. Format painter. Format painter, look at this, does not work for shading. Hmm. So, something to remember. Format Painter does not work on shading. That's okay. Here's something else we're going to do. This back in the day used to be in previous versions that you always had to, if you wanted shading every other row called banded rows, you had to literally apply that shading. And then when you inserted a new row, all right, so let's try that. I'll show it. Let me demonstrate just a moment here. So if I wanted shading there, I apply it. Now if I inserted a new row, see my shading's off. I would have to go and redo all of my shading. Well, your book is going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to tell you, let's do this a little easier, don't you think? So it says to, to select non-adjacent ranges. If you remember, that means select a range, then hold down control and select the other ranges that you want selected. We're not going to do that. Instead, on our design tab, let's look over here on our table style options. And let's just click the button that says banded rows. Now, your book, one of the things about it is that... Um, your book wanted specifically other rows. You know what I say? Too bad. This way, if you, in, if you have it with banded rows, look at it. It automatically, hey, where's my banded rows? Adjust. Adjust. Oh, now you're upsetting me. I think there's something wrong with this file because that should not be that way. If you add to the bottom, you're fine. All right, now this is going to bother me. It may be because we are inserting text from a previous document. Wow. I can't believe it did this. Intriguing. See what's happening? It's affecting the banded rows and overriding it. So, Lesson learned. You may want to retype things yourself. Um, or apply table styles yourself. Because this was all done and we brought it in from another document. Who knows when that document was really created. This could be a very old table and it's bringing in old historical settings with it. So even though we're applying new features, it still has old style defaults applied. So something to keep in mind when you are using banded rows. Actually, you know what I could do? 
All right. Take off my banded rows. Now reapply them. Oh, you're going to upset me. Even if you do that, it doesn't affect them. Interesting. If I was desperate, yes, I would go apply my own um, shading on here. Otherwise, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, otherwise, I could also go and pick, just pick a whole other style, and that would also override it. Something to keep an eye on. Bottom line, can you change and border uh, non-adjacent cells on your own? We're fine with those. I'm not going to worry about having them match the actual shading color. Here's something you may not have ever tried before. Page 246, we're talking about changing the spacing inside a cell. Did you know that each one of these cells has a margin on it? So your text does not literally come right next to the cell. Like all of these, you notice there isn't any left indent on the ruler if you click on a cell. That's because the cells actually have margins for themselves. Um, and let's look at this. Tail on the layout tab under uh, the alignment grouping, let's click the button for cell margins. Default cell margins are the top is 0, the bottom is 0, but the left is 0 .08. As you look at it, you can tell it's not very large, but it is about a character. Well, if you don't like it. Now, here's some other thing. Spacing between cells. This is an intriguing way. If you've ever seen a table uh, that has blanks between columns, this can be one of the ways that they've created it. All right, you don't get a preview. We just know the book wants us to do us to 0.02. You see, this is what you can see. Uh, they are creating white space around each cell. It's a simple way to do it. Another way to make things look really sharp. All right, these columns, now your book is saying these columns should all have the same width on them, and these should all be 0.95. You may need to type that in. Not those. And column one, if it gives you problems, uh, you may need to resize that. Mine still is 1.66. I don't know why the book had it so small. Okay. Now, in all the process of what's going on here, I notice I'm going to turn on my snow hides, make sure I didn't accidentally leave a return anywhere. I didn't. All right, that's good. Here's what I want to address, though. You may or may not still have recreation or canoeing up on the first page. And if you do, your book's going to tell you to insert a page break beforehand. I'm going to tell you no. Here's why. If we delete this table, remember how we brought in this text when we very started? Uh, there was a page break there we had to get rid of because things were going left too much of a white space. That's the problem with inserting page breaks. Instead, let's be smart. Look at this list. How much of this list would you like to keep together? Well, I think I would like to keep at least one ABC with the title. So in that case, I'm going to select Recreation 1A and B. I'm not going to select C because I don't want to say that C has to be kept with the next line because that would keep it with number two fish. No, I want the stuff above it to be kept with C. On the home tab of our ribbon, paragraph grouping, launch that dialog box, line and page breaks, I'm simply going to say keep with next and keep lines together. Click those boxes until you have a check mark in each one. The reason I'm going to say keep lines together, what if we came back and made letter B a four-line paragraph? 
Well, according to widow orphan control, it has more than three lines in it, so it could be split over two pages. I wouldn't want that. So that's why I'm doing keep lines together. Keep lines together refers to lines within a paragraph. Keep with next refers to the next paragraph underneath it. So I have little black boxes on each one of these. And if I come up here under cabins and take out some lines, okay, um, evidently I don't need that many, I can see what's going on. So my two, I would say, always needs to go with A. A always needs to go with B. My three, I would say, needs to go with those. So I would come in here and I would apply this keep with next formatting to my list in the appropriate areas instead of using an actual page break that can then later on be caught in the wrong spot and create a very short page. Make sure that you're hitting save if you haven't done so in a while. Things to think about. Park fees. This table. Evidently they don't like it as it is. They're thinking that blank column over here at the end after annual is not really needed. And I would agree with that. So they want us to get rid of it. Multiple ways to do this. Uh, go with whatever you're comfortable. I'm moving my mouse. If you can see on my screen, I have my mouse moved so that it shows me a black arrow pointing down. That means it's going to select the entire column. And I want to actually delete it. So I'm going to use a right click to select and show me a shortcut at the same time a shortcut menu and then simply say delete. You could go up under the design, I'm sorry, the layout tab and say delete column. Okay? Multiple ways to do it. One thing you will notice though is if you say press delete on your keyboard, it only deletes information inside the cells, doesn't actually um oops. doesn't actually delete the column. You could also cut it, I'm doing control X for shortcut, that would be one way to get rid of it. If you had something on your clipboard that you needed though, you've just replaced it. So you may not want to do that. Or you would need to see your um, clipboard so that you could see all the items that were on there and get it back. Because remember your clipboard will hold up to uh, 20 something items. Page 248 reminds us how to delete a row, same concept. Now we want to check out sorting in a table. So the self-guided tour, swimming, docks, and hiking, they would like an alphabetical order. I highly recommend this. Same thing that we did before with text. We simply select it and you've got several ways to get to this. I'm simply going to go, I'm already on my home tab, I'm going to use that A to Z. Or if you're on your layout tab, that is where you would use your sort button over here on the right hand side under data and it's asking you what you want to do. You want to sort on column one. Uh, if you click the button down here it says I have header rows. It, this one it doesn't quite understand what we're doing because we have um, one, two, three, four, five columns whereas the table on the line above it only has four so it doesn't really know what to do. Um, so instead let's just leave it no header row and we want to sort by column one. It is text, they are in paragraphs, and yes we want ascending. And click OK. As you notice in the dialog box there that you could sort on three different cells in this table for what we're using. Um, we're noticing however we don't have something quite correct and we need to split our access. This big long cell here needs to get split. It's not um, doing what we need it to do. It's not in the right area. So we're going to put our cursor somewhere in this and under layout tab here in the merge grouping close to the center of the ribbon is the button command for split cells. We're going to say we want to change it to two columns but still keep it only on one row 
We say OK. It worked. And we need to resize this so that it lines up with our others and other um, rows. And then access, so I just clicked and dragged that right border. On the access for it, the, the text, the word access, actually needs to get into the other cell. Easy enough to do. I'm simply going to click and drag. And just drag and drop it into the um, second cell, column B now. and they're happy with where it's ended up. So we're seeing that we can split and move working within the tables a little bit easier. Have you ever done anything about distributing rows or distributing columns? Let's check this out. We want to get these so column alright why are you not telling me what I want? These are not, see week is smaller than day or annual. Annual looks a little bigger than the others. Easy enough to do. We're simply going to select these three columns. And you don't need the end of row mark afterwards. And we're just going to say distribute these columns. And you see how it adjusted them so they all have the same width of 82.82 for that. Same thing with rows. It's easy. If we needed to, we would have done those. Same way, selecting them and then distributing them. We would have given them all the same height. And when we need another column, we're not quite done here. So we're going to insert. So here in my top left cell A, A1. Um, we're going to insert to the left. And this is where we will actually have our park feeds typed in. And then we will merge this and display it vertically. So I select all five cells. And under the layout tab in the merge grouping, we sim simply select merge fees. Notice over here on the towards the right hand side text direction. We can click that. Every time we click it, it moves 90 degrees until you have the P at the bottom going up is what we want. So let's center that. That's still your normal um, centering. You can use your buttons here under alignment. Notice that the pictures also split to tell you where you go. I'm going to do ver center, center. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm simply going to auto fit to contents. Oh, that did the whole table though. They didn't want the whole table done. Sorry. Um, I will simply do that. Alright. We'll follow what the book has. Um, we're going to use the ruler. Well, even when I do it, this is not what it's showing in your book. It's showing that docs... Okay. Oh, I see what's going on. I'm going to still fit auto fit to contents. I just always like that best. I really seriously do. After we've done all that, I guess they better not because that messes up the other things you had going on. I will live. Okay, and then if you didn't have already, make sure that we have centering tables. Distribute my columns. We already had those. Okay, this whole table I want centered across the the uh, 
page remembering when you're doing this you have to have these end of row marks selected easiest way to do that is to click on the four headed arrow up here at the top left corner and then on your home tab of the ribbon you can do the centering pay attention if your text moves to center you didn't have it selected correctly so you would want to uh, then undo that and make sure you have it fully selected you can't have text selected underneath it or above it you have to have just the table anywhere it is now we want to make certain that doesn't like the shading here and that would go for all of oops didn't mean to let's select all these rows underneath the column uh, row 1 and right of column A, everything over there. And for those we just want to remove the shading. So under the design tab, this time we go to shading. You don't go to white, you click on no color. If you go white, that's still shaded. And if there was a watermark or something behind it, you would lose it. Um, so now click away from it and you can see the effect. I like it except that I've kind of lost the bottom of the table it looks like and they're going to take care of that here in the book by actually bordering the entire table. So you put your cursor somewhere in the table and this time under our table styles I am going to look at um, all right it's not giving me what I oh borders let's go let's be smart not border styles go to borders and then down at the bottom again we click on borders and shading and the other way to get to this one if you didn't realize that here in the whole borders grouping is the arrow it's right here in the bottom right hand corner it takes you to the same place so the borders we want this time we want our all this is going to put it on all the cells why is not a style showing up intriguing is yours looking like mine oh because the color set to white see that when we get to the color we're going for olive green accent four there Whew, I feel a little better now did you did you have a little nervous moment there it goes based on what the shading was and we had set the sh shading to no color so that's why it was um, populated in for no color here if yours did the same thing Notice the apply to could be paragraph, a cell, or a table. We're doing the whole table. This doesn't put a board around the outside of it unless we had told it to, but instead we told it to do all cells. So we're feeling a little better here. One more thing we want to do to this table is to actually get some totals in here. So for people who want to have access to all park recreation, we want to put some numbers in. Easy enough. Put your cursor in the cell that we want to do. And for us, that would be under the days, at the end, the bottom of the days, and in the blank cell there. Um, under Table Tools, on the Layout tab, we want to click the button that says Formulas. The num let's give us, it populates guessing we want to do some above. I like it. Number format. Um, I'm going to put it with a dollar sign and see what does here. See, your book wants it to have without the zeros, though. So formula, change the number format. Can I get... we aren't going to write a formula so we might as well just do zero like they've asked and then we'll put a dollar, nine in a dollar sign in front of it same thing for the next one a dollar sign space insert formula 
Still says sum above. Make sure your number format, again, change that to just the zero. See, now if we've done this in Excel and just type this in here, um, just inserted it, wouldn't that be better? We could do all that kind of stuff. I like it. Okay, and here's the thing, you had to repeat it manually for each one of these, and if you ever are changing anything, notice that page 257 reminds you it does not recalculate like it does in Excel. Uh, your F9 is the, is the shortcut key, otherwise on the, you would uh, right click it, and you could say update field. two different ways to update the numbers, but you have to remember to actually do this. Um, we already, your book's telling you to go down to the bottom here and delete any extra returns. We already did that. I'm just pressing the delete key just to make certain. Let's zoom out, see what's going on in our document, see if we like it and what we want to do to it. Um, view tab, let's go to multiple pages. And you can see all three scrolling up and down. Looks kind of sharp, don't you think? I think we did well. I think it's a proposal that look we could be pleased to give to somebody. One last thing they want us to do to it, though. Well, not quite. Close. Um, they want us to actually change add in a watermark. If you've learned this in other classes, your watermark is something that is kind of faded out, doesn't have full intensity of color, can print in the background, like if you have something that's confidential, or you have drafts that you want to put on it, you can add the watermark for that until they are finalized. Um, easy enough to do, here on the design tab of the ruler, over towards the right hand side in page background, you have watermark option and you can use one of the ones that are already here or what we're going to do is go down here at the bottom and we're going to have a custom watermark and we can ta we want to click on picture watermark and we're going to select picture and this brings up our dialog box and in our search box, when it comes up, we're going to type in paw prints. Let's see what this is doing here. It looks like it's going to take a minute to load up. Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to pause a second while that's working. Oh, it came back, so never mind. Um, we will go and search from the clip art and type in paw prints. Aren't these cute? Okay, we select the one, the second one for me. Should have something for you and insert it. The scale is leave that at auto and wash out. Um, we aren't going to do any text. Let's see where this goes. Does it go everywhere? And close. Notice that it went on every page even though we have section breaks. So this is something that overrides section breaks. Uh, when I've done it in the past, especially if you want to do it in a header or footer, you would add that in on the page. It would uh, only go in the section you were working on. So this is something to realize is different in 2013. Last but absolutely not least is they've decided uh, the theme that we're working with. Love the theme. Wisp is what we want to stay with. However, the fonts may not be what we want. So let's go check out the fonts. Here on the right hand side of document formatting uh, with colors, let's go to fonts and find T-R-E. Oh, you can't type it in. These are usually in alphabetical order though. T-R-E 
B-U-C-H-E-T. So everywhere we did not change, you know, some of it we already had uh, updated. Anything that's in the default, the um, normal font, is now train changed to this font side we just took. I don't see a lot of difference in it. Let's see, I'm going to do an undo. All right, it looks to be a little bit m smaller. Huh. I don't see a lot of difference in it. But evidently, they did enough for what they were doing. Uh, if you haven't already, spell check your document. That's an F7. Mine says for your shortcut. Mine says it's good to go. And this finishes your chapter project for Word Chapter 4. I hope you found this video helpful.